Hey there, welcome to the next segment of this build of the Space Marine Landspeeder. What I'm going to be covering on this particular section is applying decals. Uh, decals can be one of those things that really makes or breaks a model and spending a little bit of time in this uh, stage of the build will certainly yield some really great results. I'm going to cover two methods of applying decals, one if you have an airbrush and another one if you don't. Uh, the reason I'm going to go through this is because not everyone has the option to, to utilize an airbrush, which doesn't mean that you can't have good looking decal application. So uh, let's go and have a look at what we're going to need here. So for this stage of the build, like I mentioned, I'm just going to quickly go over what you'll need to apply the decals if you have an airbrush and what you'll need if you don't. Uh, but for the rest of the project, I'm going to be using it as if I've got an airbrush. So first of all, we're going to need some decals. Uh, the ones I've got here are the 412 Iron Hand Sheet. We're obviously going to need our uh, Space Marine Land Speeder. For applying the decals using an airbrush, I've got this product here, which is a, uh, a floor polish, which will create a gloss surface that we're going to apply to the kit so that the decals have a nice smooth surface in which to be applied to. Uh, we're going to need some demineralized water uh, so that the decals can uh, shift off from their base sheet. Just a small glass bowl here for putting the decals and the water in. Uh, once again, a nice uh, sharp number 11 blade. We're also going to need some uh, Q-tips so that we can uh, move the decal around and smooth it out once it starts to set. Uh, obviously some, uh, some tweezers here, some nice clean ones, you don't want ones covered in paint or anything like that. Uh, next we're going to need, uh, if you're applying these just using a brush, we'll need some, uh, I use this product here, uh, X22, it's a Tamiya plant, uh, paint, it's an acrylic gloss clear. Uh, you can use that in lieu of the, uh, the floor polish if you don't have access to an airbrush. And then we're going to need some uh, decal setting solutions. So uh, this one here is the one which I prefer, which is uh, Mr. Mark Softner. Uh, there's a couple of other ones. This one uh, as well, uh, Microset, made by Microscale Industries, is also superb. Uh, but I've just, uh, I, I like this one here again. Just, it comes with a brush applicator and uh, it just makes putting it on a lot easier. Whereas this one here is uh, just a product you have to brush on yourself. So uh, they're, they're the two decal softeners. For putting decals onto uh, any surface, you should always use a decal softener. And what it basically does, uh, obviously it softens the decal, particularly when you're trying to put it on a surface which is concave or convex or just unusual, which a lot of our models tend to have. But even for putting them on flat surfaces like the land speeder that we have here, having a decal softener will just mean that when the decal gets applied, uh, the actual uh, base that the decal is applied to, it's like a, a clear film, helps get set into the model more or less so that you don't see that distinctive bump on the surface of the model. And we've got a few techniques for eliminating that bump as well as you'll see as we move forward. Okay, so let's get on with applying some decals now. The first stage of applying the decals is getting the surface right and that means getting a gloss surface for the decals to be applied to. The reason that we want a gloss surface is because the surface area of the model gets altered so that the decal has something better to grab onto. In a ver that's a very simple example or explanation of what we're trying to achieve here. If you try and put a decal over just normal paint, say a semi-gloss or satin finish, or even this one here that's got a few bumps over it, the decal isn't going to be able to adhere to the surface properly because when you look at the surface very closely, it's covered in lots of bumps. Whereas if you have a gloss surface, it's like a, like a piece of glass, the decal will have something better to apply to and you won't get any unsightly air pockets up underneath the decal, which is what gives them away. So what I'm going to do now is get my airbrush and I'm going to give the model a quick hit with uh, this gloss polish. So what I'm going to do now that the gloss has been applied is I'm going to actually put the decals on. Before you go applying the decals or even cutting them out, just spend a few minutes considering where you're going to apply the decals and what decals you're actually going to put on. So I'm going to uh, put some markings here on the fin uh, and here as well. One on the front, one on the side here and uh, perhaps some kill markings on the side and then some on the weapon systems that belong on the vehicle as well. So what I'm going to do is just cut those out, then I'm going to start applying them. So let's get on with that. 
So the first decal I'm going to apply is just these uh, salt markings. I'll just put one on and then I'm going to go ahead and put the rest on myself, but just so you can see the preparation process. So the first thing we do is cut one off and then just uh, place that in the water. Give it a few moments and it will start to actually uh, delaminate from the backing sheet that it's on. Next, while that's happening, what we want to do is actually prepare this surface just here for the decal to be applied to, which just means getting some of your decal softening solution and just putting a small bed of it where the decal's going to go. By now, uh, hopefully our decal should have uh, delaminated, so let's get it out of the water and uh, see how that looks. So again, we just want to be very, very careful. And uh, as you can see, I like to place the backing paper on my hand there, and then just very gently place it on the vehicle, uh, and then move it around till you're happy with the position that it's in. Now you can see that it's kind of floating in some uh, solution there. That's fine, because what we want to let the decal do now is actually uh, begin that softening process, which takes one or two or three minutes or whatever. You'll be able to recognize it, and I'll, I'll do a close-up shot in a moment, because the decal will start to get very wrinkly, uh, and that means that the solution has done its job, and we can start to uh, bed the, the model uh, decal down into position. While we're waiting for that decal solution to do its thing, it certainly doesn't hurt to get a little bit and just very gently add some to the top of the decal as well. Don't worry if it looks like it's flooding it uh, because we're gonna be removing any excess once the decal uh, setting solution is doing its thing. But what we wanna do now is to make sure that the, uh, the decal has plenty of solution around it so that we can start to ensure that the, the decal's prepared properly for the surface and we can get a good solid bond there. So I'm just gonna give that a few more moments. I'll do a quick close up once it start, started to act and uh, then we'll get on with uh, putting it into place. Hopefully you can see that, that the decal solution is starting to act now and it's a very distinctive appearance on the decal because it becomes quite wrinkly. So what we want to do now to uh, get the decal to uh, fix into position is we want to get our uh, cotton tip and what I like to do is moisten one end with some setting solution because what we don't want to do at this stage is tear the decal. It's very, very fragile. They're fragile enough to begin with. Once you put the setting solution on, they become even more fragile. And what we want to do now is start to remove the excess and also start to flatten it out. Now, for a flat surface, this is actually a pretty easy job. But if you can imagine we're doing a Space Marine shoulder pad or something like that, it's a very, very time consuming process and we want to be very, very careful. And as you can see, I'm starting in the center of the decal and then I'm pushing outwards. And what we're aiming to do is just eliminate all of the wrinkles and also ensure that any of that excess fluid is removed now and obviously get any air bubbles out also. So as you can see now, that decal is really uh, change quite significantly and it's also you probably can't see it but it's it's now forming all the very subtle contours on this particular piece of the kit even with the paint surface on it there's some very very soft gentle contours that the decal setting solution has now helped the uh the decal conform to and that there's how the decal is applied what I'll do now is I'll just get the dry end and I'll very gently just give it a, a bit of a rub there just to make sure that there's, there's no excess solution still on the, the surface. And that there's how the decal is applied. There's still one more stage to go yet, which is then sealing that decal in another coat of clear, which we'll get to at the end there. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is put the rest of the decals onto the kit. Uh, I'll do a few close-ups of it and then we'll be able to move on to the next stage. Now that we've completed putting the decals on the vehicle, I'll do some still shots in just a moment. 
Uh, what I'm going to move on with now is just putting a final clear coat over the top of them. The reason that we do this is to help lock the decal onto the surface of the model and also just giving it an extra coat of protection because once we start doing the weathering, we want to make sure that the decal isn't exposed to some of the, the paints that we're going to use and, and finishes we're going to use for putting the, the weathering on because it can cause them to be, uh, to be damaged. And also having that extra coat of clear over the top as well will help with the weathering process with the way the, uh, some of the oil paints and some of the acrylics that we use will, will use to, to flow over the surface of the model. So I'm going to go and add this coat of clear now. Now that we've completed putting the decals on and putting the last coats of clear on, we can now move on to the weathering stage. I'll just take a few still photos of the land speeder so that you can see what uh, decals I've applied and how it should appear. And uh, we'll move on to the next session, which will go through weathering and detailing the kit.